why would you buy an RTX SuperCard? Well, in some cases you won't have a choice. Nvidia is replacing their standard 2070 with the 2070 Super, the same for the 2080, with only the 2060 Super being an addition to the standard lineup. It seems in an effort to combat AMD at every performance and price level. Now, I'm sure you've probably already seen a load of benchmarks comparing these new RTX Super cards to their standard counterparts and also to AMD's RX 5700 cards, but since I don't have good numbers for those cards, I'm going to be focusing more on the differences between standard standard and super. The long and short of it here is that Nvidia has essentially just thrown a few extra CUDA cores at the problem and thankfully said that they should be at the same prices as their standard counterparts. This in theory anyway means that you get more performance for the same money. Here is a few benchmarks. Starting off with 3 d Mark Firestrike using the Ultra or 4K run, we can see a pretty consistent graph here where the more you spend or the higher end the card is, the more performance you get. The only real kind of outlier here is just how close the 2060 Super is to the standard 2070. With that said, in games, it's still a very linear curve with, as you'd expect, the 2070 Super being faster than the 2070, the 2060 Super being fairly close to the 2070, and the 2060 being a bit lower than the 2060 Super, as you would expect. When it comes to Apex Legends, it's actually a lot closer. In fact, it's the same for the 2060 Super and the 2070, with the two other cards being a reasonable amount different enough that kind of as you'd expect from having those extra cores. By the way, these are all 4K results, so if you do want to check out 1440p and 1080p and minimums, then take a look at the web link in the description down below. When it comes to PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, uh, again, we're looking at what you would expect for the extra cores and clock speed that you get with the Super Cards. It's ever so slightly faster than their standard versions, uh, but fairly separated in between. And Fortnite, again, is a very linear curve here where the, the higher end the card is, the more performance you get, which is really what you would expect from this, uh, this extra cores clock speed lineup. The in theory part, just before those benchmark numbers, is that while Nvidia says that their new cards should be the same price as their non-super counterparts, a cursory search in Overclock GK shows that they really aren't. The RTX 2070 Super that I have here, the Zosac Camp Extreme version, is selling for a full £100 more than the non-super of the same model. When it comes to the 2060, this is where it gets kind of even worse because the 2060 Super is again a full £100 more expensive than the non-super and more importantly is almost exactly the same price as a standard 2070. Now maybe the 2080 Super will be different here. I've actually got one coming in this week, so I will hopefully be able to tell you soon enough if that's the case, but if the price is anything to go by, then it likely won't be. So why would you buy an RTX Super? Well, besides the fact that soon you won't be able to if you want a 2070 or 2080 level card from Team Green, I really can't understand why. If you have about £450 to spend on a GPU, I would rush and go buy a 2070 instead of the 2060 Super while you still can, because right now you get more performance for the same money, at least currently anyway. In a few months when supplies are running dry of standard RTX 2070s and 2080s, the short answer is going to be, sorry, you're just going to have to go buy the Super equivalent or go buy AMD. When it comes to these cards specifically though, they're actually pretty impressive. Uh, the MSI Gaming X1 did a very good job of keeping itself cool and quiet, which is quite rare. And the Zotac card also did a very good job of keeping cool on this sweltering 35 degrees Celsius day. And overall, they both overclocked pretty well, or auto overclocked pretty well, uh, and generally very impressive. So if you do want an RTX Super card specifically, then these are definitely two good options. Now with that said, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Are you interested in picking up an RTX RTX Super card? If so, which one and why? I'd love to know in those comments down below. And if you want to pick up either of the cards that I featured in this video, then you can take a look at the links in the description down below. There'll be global Amazon links so you can see pricing when and where you watch this as well and pick one up if you want to. And if you want to see more videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, then you can take a look at that subscribe button with the bell notification icon. You can also check out the rest of the links in the description down below. There's Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links which don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you use them. There's also a Patreon if you want to get cool rewards and support me directly, or you can check out merch for t-shirts like this one, which I really like the design of, and it's pretty comfy too. Uh, the, otherwise, there's also private internet access, which is a great and cheap VPN, or Hubble Bundle for cheap games to support charities too, and there's plenty of other videos over there that you can check out. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you've got any, any questions, leave those in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.